Chromebooks, they hold charges for a, a good amount of time. So please plug your, your Chromebook in so that it's charged. Um, when you start, now a lot of these Chromebooks have not been used for a while. I did check each one. Let me, let me put that out um, before they were picked up. Uh, please make sure uh, when you, that you open up your Chromebook, a lot of times it does take a minute or so to power up. Now, if it doesn't power up, there is the power button, which is on the top right corner. It's kind of a circle with a line through it at 12 o'clock. Um, that, uh, if you hold that down, maybe for even a minute, uh, then let it go. It should power up. If you're still having some problems, you definitely can reach out to me. All right, so the first step after you power up your Chromebook is you need to enter your home Wi-Fi. So if you do have the Chromebook there, I uh, hope you can um, you know, look at it. In the bottom right corner, there's the little Wi-Fi symbol. It's kind of the, the fan. If you click on that, it will open up this box right over here on the right side and that you click on that and you'll enter your Wi-Fi information for home, password, whatever you have. Uh, here's the little symbol that you'll be looking for. And uh, if you, when you see it, it'll be, it'll be moving until, well, you know, you, you, you've got other devices. So, uh, but click on your Wi-Fi and enter your password. The second step, now this is a big one. When you, when you sign in for the first time, you do not sign in as a guest. We are going to add a person. You're adding your child. So you click the button that says add a person in the bottom left. So I'm going to leave this for a moment. Go back to the Google Meet. I have uh, my, my, a Chromebook right here. And so I don't know if you can see this very well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add a person. I, I should have set this up a little bit differently. I'm sorry I didn't. And what it's going to do, it's going to give you what we call the CPS portal. And you've probably seen that before. And that's where you're going to add or enter your child's username and, pass, and then their password. So let me go back here. Uh, it's you do not enter the at cps.edu domain. Uh, Chromebooks only need username and password. Passwords are case sensitive. So each password has at least one capital letter. So you will be adding uh, that uh, that uh, adding that password. The best the best thing about Google Chromebooks. Are, or any Chromebook is that you only need to log in one time and then you can access all your applications without having to log in for each application. When you uh, log in, here's just a couple little pointers. In the bottom left corner, there's a little circle and you click on that and it's called the launcher. And what it does it's, it's, I just wanted to share this. You do not have to use it, but it gives you all different apps that you can uh, open up. And again, you'll just have to click on them. You don't have to re-log in. All right, so here's the basic Google apps that we are going to look at today. And in this presentation, I've created a hyperlink. So you can just click on them, and it will take you to the information. But we're going to look at Google Mail. I'm sure you're most, most of you are familiar with that. Google Classroom, so like an old school chalkboard. The Calendar, Google Docs, similar to Word, uh, Microsoft Word. I'm kind of old school. Uh, Forms, is a, you, you will see teachers using this more and more. It's great for little quizzes, for surveys. Uh, it's, it's a great tool. Uh, the yellow one is slides, and that's similar to PowerPoint. And then th the triangle is the drive. And I like to think of the drive as like a 
folder that you put all your Google Docs and your papers into. All right, so real quick, let's start off with Google email. Uh, teachers are gonna be sending out notifications and information through student emails. So we really want students to continue to check it. Um, just so you know, for student safety, students, <clears throat> excuse me, can only send and receive emails with, with uh, that have the domain at cps.edu. So uh, mom and dad, unless you work for CPS, they, your, your emails will not go through to your student. Uh, they're blocked. And again, that's for safety. <clears throat> All right, so I, I'm gonna, we're actually gonna uh, look at Google Classroom, but I just wanted to talk for a second about it. Uh, what is what is this Google Classroom? And, and it's a platform, uh, it, and it's a cloud-based platform where students can join Google Meets, just like we're on today. They can find assignments. They can turn in their classwork, which is going to be super important uh, while we're home for remote learning. And basically, Google Classroom is here to support and, and help your child's learning in, in, a, in a convenient platform. Um, we're all pretty excited about Google for Education. Um, all right, so let's take a look because CPS has already assigned Google Classrooms to each student and they've already pushed them out. So let's take a look. What am I even talking about? All right, I'm gonna go over to my Gmail. You can see my Gmail, right? Yes, we can. Thank you. All right, so my, I have a color background and you know, all, all, all males look a little bit different, but <clears throat> what one of the most important things that you need to know about Gmail are these nine little dots. And some people, they're called Google Apps, it's the Google, Google App Link, but they're called waffles. So you go to the waffle and you click on that waffle and there are all the different apps right within the email that your student has that they can click on to access. And there's a lot of them, and we are so not going to go through them, and, and not all grades use them. And, and some use, some of the upper grades use others, and some of the lower grade use different ones. It's, it's, it's up to the teacher. If an app that you want to use, say, is way down here, and you want to move it to the top so it's easier to reach, all you need to do is click, hold, and drag. And you can move the apps around so you can order them however you want, okay? So the app that we're gonna jump on right now is Google Classroom. And you just click it. And there you go. And these are all, and, and you should see, because we've been checking it every day and we've been looking at lists and making sure, um, and you should see your students' classes. There'll be math classes, there'll be reading classes, uh, there'll be special classes, uh, technology, music, uh, depending upon uh, what class uh, your child has. Something that we're trying, I'm gonna, jump back here for a second. Something that we're trying this year that's different, uh, the special teachers uh, usually met with a class once a week. And it, it, with remote learning, it's, it's challenging. It was challenging in the spring. So what we're doing uh, is the special works with the class for five days in a row. So that way that we, we have some continuity, we can get some learning, and then the next week their special will change. We're super excited about this. And we, we really, really hope that uh, it works well. We're very excited as special teachers as well as the uh, gen ed teachers. All right, let me go back uh, to my Google Classes. A Couple other things we're doing this year, we're trying to be as organized as possible. And if you look at my Google Classes, each, each box is a class, you'll see it has the name of a classroom, what the subject is, but some of them also have a time. 
And this is so you can help and your in your stu your child can be organized and they know what box to click at what time. And for instance, I am seeing third grade during the first quarter, but I'm not seeing room 117 during the first week. So 117 is going to see my class, but it's going to say no class this week. So that way they're not confused as to what special they're having. Um, so it will say reading, eight to nine, math, nine to 10. Uh, just like the schedules that Mr. Kennedy has worked tire tirelessly trying to fix. All right, so now we're on the dashboard of Google. So over on the top, and if somebody who created all these names must be hungry, three vertical lines called the hamburger. You click on that, and that shows where all your classes are. And they should come up in order of time. If they don't, you can fix that. So the student knows first, second, third um, classes. It's, it's, it's we're really trying to make it as organized as we possibly can. All the classes have been pushed out, meaning your students are already in the class. And we, again, we've been working to make sure that that, you know, the best that we can that uh, that they do, they're already in there, they're already populated in the class. There is a way if something does happen, this little plus sign, that you can join a class. But CPS has really helped to alleviate that issue. All right. Ms. Now, Carr, can I just interject? Yes, please um, do. So I know I'm seeing a couple questions in the chat and if your login is not working, we will get that situated, so just hang tight. Um, Regarding the classes, as Ms. Court said, so all of that went through Aspen. So Aspen is our student portal, which basically has our entire school schedule with 308 classes in it. So for example, each of your students have, you know, five or six classes for a primary kid, maybe, um, you know, a couple more for the upper grades. They are pushing those classes out every night. They're doing it for three hours every night between, they said, 10 and 1 a.m. So if your classes are not all populating yet, don't get super concerned because they said by end of day Friday or Saturday at the latest. But for Ms. Court and myself and you guys as parents, there's really nothing we can do at this time. Now, if if by Saturday there's still classes missing, they're going to send us some email update saying that we can manually add them and we'll go from there. And I will answer a lot of these questions at the end. I don't want to take away from the overall presentation, but we're also, teachers also are doing a, three-hour orientation, first day of school in their homeroom. So a lot of that, but I'll, I'll, I'll add more to that at the end of the presentation. So yeah. for, in, for instance, I can see here in one of my classes, there's only 11 students. So I know they haven't all been pushed out. All right, so I'm gonna click on a class and show you what it looks like to go inside a class. So I'm gonna go as a student, and so I'm picking uh, the class that Mr. Kennedy created for us for this past week. So here's what a class sim would look like for your, uh, your child. And this is where they would work from. So let me go over some of the main parts of the class. Um, there's right up at the top, there's the stream, which everything I hear, you know, it's, it's like Facebook. It's kind of like a running, uh, it can be a running conversation with the teacher, setting out little notifications that then also go out to emails. Um, some teachers put on comments, uh, so students can comment in the stream, and some teachers don't. It, it, that's, that's up to them. Then there is the uh, classwork. So I'm gonna click on the classwork. And what this does is this shows all your students, or child, sorry, uh, assignments. And it helps keep everything organized. Um, and as, you know, as the year goes on, it does, you know, the assignments can get long. Um, another nice feature they have is called View Your Work. If you click on that, it shows you what was assigned, what did you turn in, but most importantly, it shows what is missing. So students can click on that 
and see if they forgot to turn something in, they can get it turned in. So again, a nice feature. All right. Um, let me just make sure. I, okay. So let's take a look. Oh, I forgot one of the most important things, but I'll go back to that. All right. We'll go on with the assignment. So here's an assignment. I'm going to click on that. And it gives me a little synopsis, tells me when it was assigned, there's no due date on this, and when it was posted. Now I want to see what that assignment looks like. So I'm going to click on View Assignment. And here's the assignment. And there might be links. I'll show you an assignment that had links in it. Um, but this assignment, tell me how your first day went. And what's so nice is this it puts everything in here for your student. So all they have to do, if I have to tell how my first day is, I go over to the corner where it says your work, I hit the plus sign, and I can create a Google Doc right here. So if I created that Google Doc, it's going to open it up. It's taking a moment. And then I click on that. And here it is. And the nice thing, it gives it a title. It tells, it puts my name in there, and it tells what the name of the uh, assignment was. I can say the first day was great. All right. And then here's another great thing is you can turn it in right there. And when I turn it in, it goes directly to the teacher and they get notification that it was turned in. Now, for me, working in the computer lab and years ago when we were just doing Microsoft, I can't tell you how many kids would hit a button and then lose all their work. And, and I, would, I would be upset. Kids would cry. It, would, it, was, it was very it was sad. And this is... This is the one thing that I think is amazing with Google is it saves everything as you type it. As you can tell, if I added more, you can see right here in the middle of the screen. And it's saving it as I type. So I can't lose my work unless I delete it. All right. So I, oops. Oh, and yeah, it also has spell checks. There we go. Got to like the spell checks. All right. If I'm done, I'm going to go over to the top right, and I'm going to click Turn In. It's going to take me back to my Google Classroom. It's asking me one more time, do I want to turn it in? I'm going to say, yep, turn in. And now... Right up here, turn from assign to turn in. There also is a, oops, I forgot to do something button. And I can unsubmit, take it back, and add if there's something else I forgot to add, if it's before the due date, and then I can resubmit it. It is, it is a great, great platform that is, is, it takes a little practice, but it's so it's so user friendly, and it really helps keep everything together. I'm going to go back out to the stream, and then into the classwork. A couple other features: you can add assignments to your Google Calendar, and I'm going to talk about that in a couple minutes. And you can add assignments there. And then students can check, and mine's crowded, and check and see what's coming up, what do they have to do. And then there's what's called the class drive folder, which puts everything, all your assignments in a folder in your drive that you don't have to touch. They're just there just in case something happens. It, it's, uh, it's a great feature. All right, I'm going to come back out. A couple things I did want to show you. All right, Google Meet. Last 
uh, last spring, there was, in the beginning, Google Meets were kind of, uh, the links were all over the place, and, and CPS had to do some quick work and Google itself to catch up. And there is this awesome feature. This is called the banner. It tells you where the what the class is. Remember, it tells what time. This one doesn't, but it, they'll tell what time. There's also a link right there. And that link will take you into the class. And the best part of this is I can't get in until somebody, until whoever owns the link, whoops, let me get rid of that. Whoever, also, I can't join until somebody, until the owner of that link get, allows me to come in. So that means a student can't hang out in a Google Meet with other students without an adult there. They can't join before an adult comes and they can't leave after the adult has left. So it's, it's really a great place. You're going to find all your Google Meets on these banners. They're not going to change. You don't have to search for, through emails. And where was that email? What date was that sent? What is this week Google's, Google Meet? They're all going to be there, right there. It's so Miss Court, would you mind, um, we do have a couple of families that did not take the school Chromebook. So for them using a regular Chrome browser, would you just point to your little CPS favorite that you have at the top left? Yep. So that, so that students could just easily use that yep. as the shortcut right. to get to their email and then everything runs through that. So whether you're on a CPS computer or not, it really doesn't matter because everything's oh, yeah. running through Google. And but, I ab I'll absolutely do that. Thank you. So I'm a big one for bookmarks. Um, it makes my life easier. Um, you can add them uh, right in the top right corner. There's three dots. You can, where it says bookmarks, so you can tell I have a ton of them. And these are places that I go, and, and, and you can click on it, and it takes you right to the link. So I actually bookmark CPS. So all I have to do is I bookmark it on my Google Chrome. And I Oh, she got booted off. Yeah, no. she put, she pressed the bookmark while she was on Google. Yeah, she forgot to open a new tab. That's okay. Um she'll join us back in a second. But again, just to answer Miss Todd's question about um the students that maybe didn't take a school Chromebook, uh that would be the easiest way is just get a button at the top within your favorites so that it's a quick um, one click of the button and they're right in their email. And that goes for people with non -C any, any type of computer that you're using. Um, the reason, while we wait for Ms. Court to jump back on, the reason we were so adamant about Chromebooks or computers versus iPads is because we're going to be doing so much of the Google Meet, it, if you're using an iPad, it's too hard to toggle between different apps and it doesn't really allow you to get back and forth between different platforms, which is why we were very high on recommending um, the Google, the Chromebook or laptop of some kind with a web camera rather than, Sorry about that. I didn't know if it, it, it kicked me out. Yeah, we know. Oh. I think you, you closed the tab that you were on. It's all good. Yeah. Sorry about that. So, so if you do that, it will, it will, um, it'll take you to the portal. Now here's the, the portal was where you had, to, uh, you had to enter the student's username and password. Now, if and all I ever type in is CPS Google login, and it will take me click on it, and it will take you right to the portal. And then if you bookmark it on uh, up at the top, all you have to do is click, and it's there. Um, I, I like those things that make my life easier. Okay, um, I just wanted to show you uh, a couple other things um, in. Um, Google Classroom, just so you can see uh, the versatility and the, and the things that um, teachers are going to be surprised at how creative and, and fun some teachers have made their Google Classroom and some of the things that we can uh, put into a Google Classroom. 
So um, I'm going to jump back over here um, and, and just show you just a couple things. Um, on this Google Classroom, I put in a link. And this link, uh, teachers will put in links, and this would take you right to a program online. And maybe a teacher will ask you to do 20 minutes of IXL, and they put the IXL link right in the assignment. Or uh, maybe they want you to watch a, a video, and they'll, they'll link the video, and then you can go right back to uh, the Google Classroom. Here, here were the forms that I was talking about. And again, sometimes they're super simple. How did you like it? What, did you enjoy doing typing club? Um, it, you know, sometimes they're longer. Uh, there's just so many different creative ways. Um, my goal is uh, I took a, one of the CPS people who run uh, all of the Chromebooks in Google. Um, I, I did a couple things with her over the summer. And, and one of them was what's called Google Palooza, and she's super creative. She and she's got topics and emojis, and I mean it's it's really fun to look at. So that's my that's my goal <laughs> is to try and you know and, and keep adding and making it as creative as possible. Um, I'm gonna jump back just to go over a couple other things. Um, I appreciate everyone uh, here. Um, let's go back. Okay. Um, talked about that. So Google Drive. Uh, I just want you to, that was the, where the folders are, where Google Docs go into. And uh, it basically, it's, it's, it's a drive. The drive is your child's virtual backpack. It stores, organizes, puts everything in it. Assignments, documents. Uh, it keeps things safe. Um, and you can access them from any computer, which is super great. If you, uh, you know, if you're visiting your aunt and or your uncle and you forgot you had an assignment to do, they've got a computer, you can log in. And the work, again, is saved automatically. Got to love that. Um, Google Docs, that's the paper they write on. That's the word. Uh, but there's great things with Google Docs. You can collaborate with peers and teachers real time. Uh, teachers may comment while you're working on something. Um, you can share. Uh, you can share it with if if you have to work in a group. You can share the Google slide, the presentation, and you can both work on it in your own homes at the same time. It it really uh, offers itself to collaboration. Uh, presentations um, when we're in the computer lab uh, second graders we're making awesome presentations on Google Slides um, and and it's you know it's fun to do the kids love it and you know let's let's jump in right away let's start getting some stuff done I know second grade did a lot with Google Slides uh, weather and, and different types of uh, science uh, presentations the calendar that's a good one. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you how you can link your calendar and your child's calendar to the CPS or to the Saganash calendar so that you know everything that's going on in school. And as I showed you earlier, you can also uh, look at uh, Google uh, Google Classroom and your assignments will come up. We talked about forms, uh, quizzes, surveys. And that so I want to just super quick how how again do I find all this stuff all I have to do is go into my email and find that waffle all the way on the top right click it and there it all is I can go into my drive and there's and and the, and you just I'm not going to go into using all these because each one is a a class in and of itself, but there's all, you can create folders, just like a filing cabinet. And inside the folders are uh, 
more folders and, and, and documents. Um, let me go back. Um, I just do want to show you one last quick thing is uh, the school, how you can sync super easy with the school calendar. I hope we all know the school website. And um, the school calendar, right up at the top, Sauganash calendar. All, all your child has to do is click on that. Most, I usually have them do it. So uh, third grade and up, it should be done. But you just go to the calendar, super easy, and you just click that little plus button right at the button, and it will ask you if you want to add the calendar to your calendar. So the, there's just so much. And the one thing, the, the last thing that I want to say is here are some links. There's so many YouTube videos out there and to help you but when all else fails do what we all do google it just ask google the question and google will help you find the answer um uh, that's i believe that i tell the kids to do it did you google it so uh it, you know I, I don't want you to to be apprehensive about this um the teachers are so well they're really working on getting this helping they'll be there to help you I'm there. Send me an email. I can reach out, uh, Mr. Kennedy. We really are all about making this work. Okay, I think I'm done. Ms. Court, uh, Ms. Lekas asked if they can link their classroom calendar to their calendar. I don't know if you'd want to do that because I don't know if you want to oh, see. It. Oh, you mean mom and dad? Yeah. I, well, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> Because it would probably show everything that's posted in the Google Classroom, even stuff. There, there. I didn't. I there's another. There's a whole other aspect where you can receive summaries for the week that that went on in the class, and that would be sent to your uh, your email. Um, I can I can add that to the deck. That was it just it was just going to go too long. I didn't want to. So Google me. Drive is their own digital folder. Um, it is private um, unless there's shared documents in it. So a lot of times within the drive, you're going to have shared documents where um, if it's, let's say, uh, students are working together and there's five students working on one document, then those five students sort of access that document plus the teacher. Um, so there would be shared documents, but in terms of your drive, no one can access your drive. Um, every, I'm going to go, go ahead. I was just going to re uh, reemphasize the, the, Anything that a student does, it can only the student can only communicate with uh, an email that's at the domain is at cps.edu. So and that right, I just saw uh, Kimmy give me the thumbs up. That way you're safe, and they, they can't people from the outside can't uh, talk to them or email yeah, them. Yeah, parents, or, you can't be emailing your kids. It will, nope. CPS will block it. Yeah. It, it, you um, didn't get it, unless unless you work for CPS. So I'm going to answer a couple questions that I think I saw in the chat and hopefully help clarify things. And then if you have more questions, um, we'll hang on for a couple minutes to answer them. But I do want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, so a couple of different things. The student login, CPS pushed out those emails saying your student's, uh, your student's account is not active. Uh, that just caused more confusion. So if sorry about that. <laughs> if you're a kindergartner, it will not be active until we give you the credentials tomorrow. Someone like Kaming, Kaming um, is on here. He's a Kaming is going to fourth grade. Kaming, he we, he we did not do anything to activate his account. He had his account from last year. All he did this summer, or maybe today, whenever he decided to reopen his Chromebook, is he opened it, logged on with his credentials, and those credentials stay the same. Whether you're in CPS, you could go transfer schools within CPS. Those credentials are going to stay the same. So there really is no activation process. Kindergartners, we just have to give you your credentials tomorrow. So right. kindergartners should be really the only ones um, that have an issue. Everyone else, uh, Ms. Court, has worked diligently to set up. Um, your child has no homeroom on his class. Um, 
Miss Medina, I will look. Is that is that is that Kate and Medina's mother? Sorry, it's um Stegen, um Alessandra Stegen. She oh, I'm sorry. Okay, what is uh um? I will look into that. Will you send me an email? Yeah, I will, sir. Thank you. We want to make sure that that um, yeah, there's no email. Only right. has, uh, oh. like, the total should be nine. She only has eight classrooms. She doesn't have a homeroom. Okay, I'll get that figured out. Thank uh, you so much. Uh, if I can ask, if I can ask uh, Julia Miller's mom, um, there is a grid view, and we uh, we all, like right now. I I'm seeing this about. Well, if I if he if Mr. Kennedy stopped presenting, I would see 109 people. They'd be tiny, um, but it allows us to do it. So they're they're constantly updating it. We're staying on top of which one works. They're called extensions, and you can add extensions to Google Chrome. And it's it's a little tricky at first to get used to, but once you get used to it, I love them because they're so, so easy. You just add them, and they come up. So yes, yes, we can see the whole class. I'm gonna hold off on questions and I'm just gonna show a couple things and then I'll get back to those. All right, so this was the newsletter that went out yesterday. It was very comprehensive. We understand that, but there was a lot of information to get out. Um, if you did not get it, I'll post it in the chat. Hope, if you're not getting our newsletters, um, we want to make sure you're getting them because it's our main it's our main uh, outlet for communication. So if you're not getting them, please. Uh, let me know and we'll get you on that list. All right. It's on the website. How yep. do you do it? This news that went out yesterday. So this is, um, and our network chief, um, you know, shout out to our staff. Our network chief actually asked, she, she gets her newsletter too. So she's basically our superintendent. She's in charge of 36 schools in network one. She actually asked if she could use our newsletter to show the other schools in the network. So um, she she was very impressed with, you know, the, the amount of information in there. I know it was a lot for you guys to take in. Um, but this is was a couple of the. Um, I want to I want to show you two things before I get to your questions because I may I may be able to answer them. Um, the CPS has this whole website of reopening. Um, okay, so I want to show you this, and then I want to show you why we did what we did. So CPS put out um, their framework, the remote learning guide, in terms of what students are doing and regarding synchronous versus asynchronous instruction, they're calling it. So synchronous is instruction that would be done in a virtual platform like we're doing now on a face-to-face -face Google Meet, whereas asynchronous instruction would be something where the kids might be writing in their math book and completing pages 11 and 12. So that's more of a hard copy consumable that they're doing where they're not necessarily on that screen time. Now with that said, with the asynchronous instruction, although the students may be completing you know, pages 11 and 12 in their math book after doing a lesson with the teacher, the teacher may still leave the Google Meet open in case kids have questions. That does not mean that the students are expected to be in a virtual platform. If they want to close their computer during that, that, those times and those, um, when, the, when, the, when the teacher gives them that freedom to be like, hey, you're going to work on this independently, um, they can close their laptop and, you know, get a break from the screen and do that. But the teachers may still be running those Google Meets in case kids have questions. It would be no different than if a teacher was sitting at their desk and the students are doing some independent work and they want to come ask the teacher at their desk. So just keep that in mind. Um, I want to give you a little bit of what CPS put out and to show you why we didn't necessarily go this route in terms of the school day scheduling example. So for students in K2, they did a sample schedule. So this is something that they put out. Um, 8, 20 to 9, and, and a lot of the stuff on this website is super good. So I'm not, I'm not knocking it at all. I'm just um, giving you an insight into what our philosophy was and our vision when we kind of did what we did. Uh, so this is just in a breakdown of, of a K2 through, uh, K through two uh, students day. Um, so they would be, you know, on a, on a mix of virtual instruction and non-virtual, which is synchronous and asynchronous. Uh, 820 to 8 to 920 is morning meeting, literacy, social studies, brain breaks. So that's what they're calling real time, which would be that uh, virtual face to face in a Google Meet. And then they have, you know, 40, um, 50 minutes of, or an hour and 10 minutes of literacy, social science independently, then art for an hour. And this, then they have 45 minutes of lunch, gross motor, then math for an hour. And so the reason we didn't like this and the reason we didn't do it is two reasons. 
one, we don't want the kids or the parents to be so worried about where I have to be at what specific time. Oh, I have to be here at 1030. Oh, my other kid has to be here at 1215. Oh, my other kid has to be here at 125, which is why we steered away from this because we did not want to have the instruction get taken away by people being um, so worried about the schedule and where they had to be when. So our schedules are created other than third and fourth who have a little bit of a theirs is in white. Um, they have a little bit of a different schedule because they're, they only have three hour and 15 minute classes because there's now three third grades and three fourth grades. So without including third and fourth in this, everyone else is starting on the hour at the hour. We have a school wide lunch break from 11 to 12, as you can see here in red. So every kid, we, we did this purposely so that people that have multiple kids, I have a second grader and a fifth grader. Okay. All, both your kids are going to be off from 11 to 12. All right. The yellows are for specials. That's when they have their specials. So specials will be structured in a 30 minute, you know, synchronous where they're in a virtual format. And then maybe the last 25, 30 minutes is in a more of a off um, screen um, situation where they would be doing it off screen. Um, so again, we did not build in breaks either because in terms of the schedule, the teachers will be building in breaks. I want everyone to make sure that they know that breaks are going to be built in. And we have, we're going to have a school-wide rule among our teachers where, hey, you need to end your session at least eight to 10 minutes early so that we can give our kids time to go to the bathroom, hit up the refrigerator and grab a string cheese and return to their computer or whatever. So we, did, we didn't want to have it be eight to 8.50 is this, 8.50 to nine o'clock is a break, nine to 9.20 is this. So that was reason number one why we did not go that route. We wanted to make it easy for you guys. Hey, all you have to know is at the top of the hour, the kid is expected to be going into their Google Classroom and then hitting that meet link so that they can start virtual. And then it will be up to the teacher to build in those breaks, to build in that asynchronous instruction. So that was done, I think, to, make, to, to streamline everything in terms of the instruction and make not – we don't want families and – um, parents to be like robots. We don't want you guys to be so consumed in the schedule that we're taking away from the learning. All right. Reason two we did this is it is my belief, may not everyone's, but it is my belief that we are going to be back in a hybrid model at some point this year, whether it's November 9th at the start of second quarter or a different time, which is why we stuck to our framework of our school schedule. So looking at the first great example here, I keep thinking I can't blow this up. Oh, I can't blow it up. Um, Let's look at the first grade schedule here, okay? When they come back in a hybrid model, again, this is just my opinion, because I think we're gonna be in a hybrid model at some point, the student's schedule is almost the exact same when they come back. We did not feel, you know, there, and I'm not, <laughs> um, there's, there's other schools that, you know, did a very remote schedule, and then we feel that when they go back in a hybrid model, it's gonna be like starting over and trying to retrain every, everything. Ours will not be like that, and that's what we're most excited about, when first grade comes back in a hybrid model, they're still going to have their specials nine to 10. Okay. There's still the lunch. It will change a little bit, but we put it 11 to 12 because that's pretty much right in the middle of the day. Um, they're still going to have math in the afternoon. They're still going to have literacy in the morning. Uh, so that was our philosophy and why we wanted to do it the way we did. Um, so I just wanted to kind of clear that up and then a couple other things before I open up to more questions. Um, They'll be getting another, uh, you'll be getting another newsletter this weekend um, that I'm in the process of creating, but it is basically going to go over that our first day of school on Tuesday is going to be a homeroom orientation. So from 8 to 11, again, we will build in breaks. I don't want you to think the kid's going to be sitting in front of the computer 8 to 11, but before lunch on that first day of school, every, every kid in the school will be with their homeroom teacher and they will be going through an orientation much like you got tonight. We're gonna to help the kids put their Google Classrooms in the sequ sequential order. We're gonna help the um, students make sure that they have all of their classes in case there's some technology issues. So the whole first day is gonna be going over class norms. Um, this will be another thing teachers go over. Teachers have their own norms. We went over them in our professional learning um, with the teachers in terms of what's expected from them. Um, so this is all stuff that we've done on the first day of school, 8 to 11. Now, if you're a K-1, um, 2 student, those students pretty much are with their homeroom teachers the majority of the day anyway. First and second grade switch a little bit. Kindergarten does not switch at all. Um, so it won't be a huge adjustment for them. But for the departmental, you know, 3 through 8 especially, 
they're not used to being with their homeroom teacher that for that long of time. Normally it's 10 minutes in the morning for attendance and then they're off seeing their four, four different teachers throughout the day. So we felt doing an orientation first day of school um, from eight, eight to 11 before lunch. Like I said, all the teachers will give them plenty of breaks within that time, um, plenty of time off the screen, but that is going to be a nice orientation for all the students to get acclimated, you know, see their peers, not have to worry about, um, you know, instruction right off the get go, get acclimated and do all that. So that is, that is the vision for Tuesday morning before we get into the actual scheduling. Um, and then previously, a lot of parents that I spoke to, I told you that the group, that the schedules would have links to the Google classroom. Okay. We had to, we had to scratch that idea um, because CPS already pushed out the Google classroom. So we felt it would be more confusing for us to be like, all right, 107 has writing with Mrs. Karasik here. Let's let's link the Google Classroom. The kid already has the Google Classroom when they log in her account, so we didn't want to create extra confusion. All right, but I want I, I I want everyone to you know cool their nerves and realize that the teachers know this is going to be a process and that 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 orientation first day will help alleviate a lot of that. Um, but, and then in terms of the breaks, I, I wanna get back to the breaks. I know there's a lot of um, other schools that are building in the breaks in the schedule. We will have just as many breaks as the students need. We're just not building it in because of the fact that we do not want to be everyone, have everyone so focused on the schedule. We want them to focus on the learning. Um, so that's pretty much all I got. Um, and then, the, oh, I do have one more thing. <laughs> or before we think, Ms. Court, um, and then we'll get to any other questions. But the other thing we're going to do this year, which we spoke to the teachers about, is we're really going to try to, one, alleviate all homework. They're really, I mean, upper grades may have a little bit, but we're really going to try to alleviate all, if not most, homework. And we want the students to be able to complete the work within their block of time. So let me get back to my little overview here. So let's say, for example, um, you know what, let me, let me get to an actual schedule. Let me go to fifth, sixth grade for an example. So here is the schedule. So we have, we're departmental, as you know, um, third through eighth, and we we they're in sections. So you have section one, section two, in fifth grade. You have five one and five two. There's two sections in sixth grade, six one, six two. Um, in third grade and fourth grade this year, we now have three sections. So I'll pull up their schedule too in a second. But what I'm saying is that so math, Mr. Chushi teaches all of fifth and sixth grade math. So he has section six, two. So he has sixth grade section two from eight to nine. The expectation is that those students should really be completing whatever Mr. Chuchi has. And the teachers know this as well. They're not going to be overloading these students with work, but that, that, that work, that classwork, that participation work should be done within that block of time. We do not want Mr. Chuchi when he sees the kids the next day to be saying, Oh, I need work from you, you seven or you eight or, you 16 kids didn't turn this in. We don't want to get into the scenario where we're tracking kids down for stuff. So teachers know that they're going to be giving the appropriate amount of work so that it can get done within their block of time. Is that to say that your kid will have no homework? I mean, if they're, if they're completely, you know, unengaged or not doing the expectation, they may have to, you know, do an assignment after hours or during this two to three office hour time. That's what that is kind of open for. The teachers are going to open Google Meets. So that, hey, if Kaming, and I'm Kaming, I keep using an example because you're on here. But if Kaming, had, um, let's say he didn't finish something for one of his teachers, he can go utilize this time and be like, hey, Mr. Chuchi, no, he, he's not in that grade, but Mr. Chuchi, um, I have a question on this, you know, page 12, number 13, I'm really struggling, can you help me? So that's what that last hour is, is available for. Um, it can be virtual if your kids want it, it can be independent if your kids don't want it. Um, so that is kind of what that looks like. But the goal is really to, the students really shouldn't be having homework if they're diligent and getting the stuff done within their block of time. And the teachers are not going to be overwhelming them because they don't want to be tracking kids down the remainder of the week. Um, when Mr. Chuchi has 6-2 the next day or on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, you know, they want to go through with the lesson at hand. We're not trying to track kids down and say, you know, this has to be turned in. You didn't turn this in. Because um, that's just hard to do in a remote setting. Um, so that's, I know, I know I talk fast and I apologize. It's something I'm working on. Um, 
but that is uh that's kind of everything we have so far so i'm happy to answer any other questions um there, there was a question mr kennedy um a couple of questions about aspen um if a if a parent has um two children they'll they just need one login for aspen and they'll see both children correct Correct. Um, so there could be a there could be a glitch where I have to link the two kids. So you should be able to add both of your children on your own. If you can't, send me an email. And what I do is I go in and I can link two kids. So if Miss Court has a sibling, and you're only seeing Miss Court, I can then go link Miss Court's sibling, and you would then see both of them. Um, there, that's there a really are, easy fix. Um, there, I, there, there's a couple other questions that they're not seeing their student in Aspen. Are we just assuming? It could be because all this is turning over and they should wait. No, it shouldn't matter. Aspen it shouldn't really have any affiliation with that. Okay. Um, in terms of them, what, whatever they're pushing out is Google Classroom related. It shouldn't really affect your parent portal account. Um, the last thing I did want to show is just the third, fourth. So third and fourth grade does have, um, let me just, sorry, one second here. Third and fourth grade does have three classes. So we, we have three third grades, three fourth grades. So they have three section numbers. So Mrs. D'Amico, Ms. D'Amico and Ms. Gustafson are two of our new teachers. Ms. Gustafson has been here for a couple of years, but she's a teacher this year instead of a TA. So Ms., uh, they'll be doing math uh, with Ms. D'Amico, language arts with Ms. Gustafson. And then um, the only two third and fourth grade teachers that are seeing both third and fourth grade are Mr. Tater and Ms. Kresmer, and they're on a block schedule. So for example, if your student is in section 3-1, Every day at 9 to 10, 15, they would have Miss D'Amico all the way across the board. And then at 12 to 1, 15, they would have Miss Gustafson for language arts all the way across the board. The only thing here is they would have Miss Kresmer Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then Thursday, they would have Miss Tuesday, Thursday, they would have Mr. Tater. So a little bit of um, getting used to for third, fourth. But again, we know that. One, we know second grade to third grade is a huge jump. Um, so we're, you know, we're going to help our kids through that and that shouldn't be an issue. And again, the way we're setting up the Google classrooms with labeling the times and the days of the week that they have it should hopefully help streamline that for our kids. But I know it's a ton to take in from a parent perspective. Um, but again, we're, we're going to orientate the students through everything. Um, it's, it's not going to be hitting the ground running. It's going to be, um, how's everyone doing? Great to see everyone. Yep. And then we kind of move on from there. Uh, other questions uh, was this about the curriculum night yeah so curriculum night um, we usually do it like the second Thursday we're gonna push it up a little bit because we know uh, we'll probably do it Monday Tuesday Wednesday over the second week so what is that uh, September mm, September 16th um, yep so we'll go through the first week so September 8th Tuesday is the first day of school we'll have four days of school and then that following week, 14, 15, 16, will be various grade level curriculum nights. So third and fourth, and let's say first grade, maybe one night, um, you know, seventh, eighth, and second grade, maybe another night. Um, and we'll, we'll do something like that. We, want to, we don't want to do it the first week. We want everyone to get settled in. And then, you know, the second week, I'm sure you'll have even more questions and the teachers will be able to answer them in those curriculum nights. Mrs. Mrs. Oz, I just saw your question. So the reason why he can't uh, email you things is because of your email. They can't email outside of the CPS domain. So that's why. Is uh, a workaround? Hmm. Uh, for Ms. Fitzgerald, yes, it is being recorded. We will post it in the next newsletter. Um, so in terms of printing, with, with the way we're setting up the Google classrooms for this school year the expectation is not for parents to have to print um kindergarten you know with, with us not having a reading book k to four well k to eight we don't really have a reading base or we don't have a textbook for reading um a lot of that stuff's going to be posted in pdf format on their google classroom um there we you know i'm working with kindergarten mrs Munz and i are working with kindergarten now in terms of do we want to um distribute a couple of reading texts for kindergarten, but uh, the reading most of the time will be, you know, on the Google Classroom in an article, Scholastic News, and maybe a virtual PDF. Uh, so yeah, the expectation is not that parents are gonna ever have to print anything, um, nor, nor should, I know kindergarten, first grade, and 
Second grade sometimes had the parents um, take a picture of the student work and submit it. That's no longer the expectation either. Um, with the streamline of Google Classroom, the expectation is that is what is being used. And, you know, I don't want parents to feel like, oh, I have to do this or turn this in or send this to my, um, my student's uh, teacher. It's all going to run through Google Classroom. And if the teachers set it up correctly, like we've been trained on and will be continue to be trained on, you know, there really shouldn't be work being turned in from you guys. Um, other questions, socializing. Um, I, don't... I think there are some questions about perhaps a, a Google Hangout during lunch. I, I think we are trying to alli um, allevi alleviate, alleviate time on the screen during lunch. And everyone, step back and take a break. So um, there's a couple things that Google's also pushing out this, this month, which is a whiteboard function, a breakout function, and then um, like a raise your hand function and a couple others. Um, our goal is to, you know, get the kids in small groups multiple times so that they can converse with one another. Um, I'm, I, I know our teachers know that, you know, our social emotional well-being of our kids is important. So we want to make sure that we're giving them opportunities to you know, converse and collaborate in an informal manner too. We don't want everything to be business oriented of where they're only talking, you know, text or math. If they want to, you know, say to Kaming, how are you doing? You know, what, what, what video games have you been playing? Like we know that that stuff's important too. Um, and, and our teachers will make sure that that is, you know, top of mind when it comes to um, this school year. It's not gonna, it's not gonna, as much as the instruction's important, we understand that there's more to a student than, you know, math reading and the other subject areas. Um, Ms. Arturo, Mr. Ms. Arturo if you are in kindergarten, you will be getting the credentials tomorrow. Um, if you are not in kindergarten, you should already have the credentials, I believe. If, if you don't have them, you can just email me. I'll put my email in the box and you can email me uh, your child's uh, name, full name, and I will help you out. So there's mine and Ms. emails. Um, any other questions? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get present. I was in present mode, so I didn't see a ton. Um, Mr. Kennedy spelled my name room. It's like basketball court. Oh, I'm sorry. No, uh, that's okay. Ms. Schumer said, where can we see the sections? One, two, three, my child is in. Yeah, great question. Um, so the Google Classrooms will have it labeled on there. Uh, we didn't, or you can email us. I, we didn't want to put lists of what, what sections every kid is in and it had posts on the website, you know, for security reasons. Um, but when they log into their Google Classroom, it will say, uh, Mrs. D'Amico 3-1, Ms. Gustafson 3-1, Mr. Tater 3-1. Um, so they should see it there. If you're not seeing that, definitely let us know. All right, uh, Ms. Ricoma asked a great question. Does that mean worksheets, et cetera, will be turned in on that day rather than doing another? Yes, that is the expectations. And again, this is, this is more for teachers' well-being too. They don't want to have to be tracking kids down for multiple assignments. Does that mean that every kid is going to turn in something every day? Um, there, may be, there may be situations where kids have to play catch-up once in a while. So two things to that question. Um, one, Aspen grading is going to be – normal if we were in the brick and mortar building. So it's not like last spring where, you know, kids, if they got a uh, letter grade in third quarter, they couldn't go below that. It is, it is normal grading as we would be in the building. So um, again, the teachers are keeping that in mind that we're in virtual setting and you're not, it's not as easy to track kids down for work. And we want to make sure that the work is um, appropriate. We're not inundating them with work. Um, I had another point to her conversation about the worksheets. Um, oh, so the other, that was the other thing. So every teacher for, for first quarter, we are doing a 50%, every class in the school is doing 50% participation. The reason we are doing that is for the exact reason that we're not going to be able to be collecting a ton of, let's say math, for example, every kid has a math book at home, right? We're not going to be able to, those kids aren't going to be scanning those workbooks to prove that they did that. So the, there's going to be a 50% in um, participation grade in every single class. So whether they're in second grade reading, fourth grade math, um, technology, PE, it is gonna be a fifth, all the specials will be 50% participation, 50% um, you know, classwork. And then the other classes, let's say 
Miss Trapp's second grade reading class will be 50% participation, 30% assessments, 20% classwork. Um, the reason that is, is that that participation is going to be based on the kids being engaged while they're in the Google Meet, the kids um, following the classroom expectations and, and, you know, being there and doing the work. But let's say, just to give you one more example, let's say Miss Trapp is doing a math lesson with her kids and um, they're working on, you know, double digit subtraction and she wants them to complete pages 11 and 12. We're not going to be able to know if the kids did page 11 and 12. She may have three of the kids in class hold up their, their um, page to be like, hey, this is what I got. Or maybe the kids are typing in a chat. Hey, I got my answer was 34, you know, whatever the case may be. But because we don't have that, um, that luxury of being like, oh, I can put that in a grade in Aspen, that's why the participation um, grade on every student's class is going to be so pivotal. Does that make sense? Do the kids have another orientation for parents from their kids' teachers? So that will be curriculum night. Um, I'm trying to catch up on these chats. Curriculum night, uh, second week of school. Do they need their ID to link a sibling? Um, you should need your student's ID if you're linking a second sibling. Uh, but it, again, it shouldn't be a huge issue. If uh, Miss Miss Mayor, since your kids are at different schools, you you would if you only can see Max's name and you can't see Maddie's name, you would have to call Maddie's school. Otherwise, if you have Maddie's ID number, you should be able to link them both. Um, other questions. All right. I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll wait on for a couple more minutes if anyone else has any questions. I want to thank Ms. Court for her um, presentation. Like I said, she's a, she's a Google and technology um, wizard when it comes to that stuff. She does a lot with our Chromebooks and troubleshooting stuff. So um, we appreciate that, Ms. Court, um, and we appreciate all of you. I think we had over 110 at oh, one point. So appreciate, appreciate all of you taking your time to be here. It's it, it, when you start using these platforms, I promise they'll start to make sense. They really will. And if you have questions, please reach out. And, and um, I, I, know you, I know all of you are working and doing the best you can at home. And you can't, I can't tell you how appreciative we are of that and how you know, everyone's in these situations. But if that first day um, from 8 to you know, 11, you have some time where you can kind of sit in to your student's orientation, I don't think that's a bad idea either because – you'll kind of be seeing what the teacher is giving out in terms of um, directives and, you know, expectations from a, from the student perspective. And then of course, you know, just that first week of school, just, you know, get a notepad and jot down some questions so that when you have your curriculum night with your specific teacher, you can, you know, um, in a daytime with questions uh, that you may have seen the first week or anything like that. But again, thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope everyone has a great evening, a great weekend, a great Labor Day. Um, and then last thing is the desks. We are handing out desks. I know a lot of people are having trouble getting them online. We don't want you to pay for them. Um, our network chief approved it for us to uh, hand out the school desk. I will be sitting outside the cafeteria. Uh, Mr. Carlos put about 80 desks out there in the cafeteria. So I will be – you don't need to sign up anything when you come tomorrow if you want a desk. I'll, I'll, I'll basically base it off this um, grade your child is in. I'll give you something that's close to what we think the size is. You can always adjust it at home if you need to. It's just four screws. Um, and the and desk come with a chair. Yeah, and we'll give you a chair too. And then you can, you know, that will hopefully help you emulate a school setting as best as possible. But you don't need to sign up for anything. When you come, you're just going to sign a little spreadsheet, uh, parent name, student name, grade, and that's it. And then kindergarten has their in-person meet and greet tomorrow. Um, first grade had it today. It went really well. They were socially distanced in hula hoops. It was awesome. Um, and then kindergarten will also get their Chromebooks if they need them. Um, any families who have not picked up the brown bags, we will also have that available as well. And then I had a couple parents email me that they ordered a yearbook. If you did not get your yearbook, we missed the first day um, by putting them in the brown bags. So anyone that picked up, the brown bags on Tuesday of last week. There would no, there wouldn't have been any yearbooks in there because I missed it. I dropped the ball, but I will have them available tomorrow too. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, have a wonderful evening. Bye. Thank you.
and there are 